Hey Canada, it's Anthony Fury here for the latest edition of Culture Warriors and I'm joined in studio today by Jody Emery. Welcome. Thank you for having me. You're of course a well-known cannabis activist, owner of Cannabis Culture. Just in December, you learned you had your sentencing hearing, you pled guilty to some charges and the good news is, is you did not go to jail but there have been other negative ramifications that you have faced for having those marijuana dispensaries in Toronto. Absolutely. Over the last year I've been on bail so I've been unable to participate in anything related to cannabis and with my sentence I accepted a guilty plea to allow 17 people to have all their charges withdrawn and because I knew that pulling out my case would take up time and money I don't have. So I pled guilty to two charges and with that came a $150,000 fine for myself and a victim surcharge fee of 75000 So I'm looking at nearly $200,000 I don't have and I need to earn that somehow. But my other exclusions include not being allowed to own a licensed producer of medical marijuana and with many different provinces allowing private retail, they're including these prohibitions on people who have criminal records. So one of the major concerns that we really need to address is that people with criminal records who have non-violent histories must be allowed to participate in the legal market, especially if the police and politicians are allowed to get into the business now. So Jody, to be clear, you were charged by doing this dispensary that they've said is illegal. Mm -hmm. Now there's this whole industry flourishing. You've been in this market for 10, 15, mm -hmm. 20 years. Your husband, Mark Emery, been in it for many years as well. They're saying even though you guys have the knowledge base and experience, you're now blocked from the industry. Well, we're being punished for our peaceful civil disobedience. And it's true that we began our dispensing business in May of 2016. So we're 25 year old brand next year and Mark's been doing activism for a long time, but we never sold cannabis. So we entered into this to set a model of what legalization should look like. Adult use sales in an environment where it's over the counter and people loved it. They loved that model and the task force of the federal government said we should have dispensaries. So it was really a shame to see the government of Ontario and other jurisdictions saying that they're going to limit the participation of not just ordinary citizens, but particularly activists and pioneers and prohibition victims who have been persecuted in our campaign to make it legal in the first place. So Jody, how do you feel about the fact that July 1st, although we know the date might be pushed back, but somewhere around there marijuana is going to be legalized across Canada. Justin Trudeau has tried to get a lot of street cred out of it, but at the same time only six months before you were potentially locked up for a long time mm -hmm. based on doing that very thing the Prime Minister says he wants to have happen. And of course yeah. there's some liberal buddies and pals mm -hmm. who are actually poised to really rake in the cash from this. Already making millions before it's legal and they're insiders who are benefiting from the hard work that activists have done. So it's very distressing to see that the Liberal government says they're legalizing cannabis but right now under the Controlled Drugs and Substances Act there are only eight cannabis offenses. Under the Cannabis Act, C4 45, there are 45 new offenses. Wow. They increase the penalties of many of these offenses, including equating them to child pornography and terrorism with 14 year maximums. That removes the ability to get house arrest. So in fact, if you look at the details, and as I wrote last year in some op-eds, this is not really legalization. They're legalizing the ability of some businesses to sell pot, but the existing industry is still criminalized. Nobody's getting amnesty or reparations or expungements of records yet. In fact, the arrests continue and the Prime Minister says they must continue and they're still spending millions of dollars on enforcement and promising up to a billion more. But, but Jody, isn't the government saying we want to legalize marijuana but we also want to go after the black market and organize mm -hmm. crime? So maybe they'd argue that's why some of these offenses are actually stricter and a lot of parents and Canadians who are okay with legalization but still want to see this that this unclean stuff go away, mm. this is the pathway. Isn't that uh -huh. what the government would say and how do you feel about that? Well, the interesting thing about legalization activism is I've been doing it for 14 years now and one of our early ideas to sell it was that if you criminalize something, the criminal market controls it. So if you decriminalize and legalize it, the criminal market won't control it, it'll be legitimate. So as we fought for legalization, there are three goals. Stop criminalizing ordinary Canadians who use it, Stop criminalizing the existing industry that's worth billions of dollars, make it legitimate, stop spending billions of dollars on law enforcement. But they're not doing any of that. And what the government says is they want to criminalize 
what's already criminal, that they're going after the criminal market, but they're creating the criminal market through their criminalization laws. Mm. It feel like I'm going insane with some new reefer madness sometimes, <laughs> but it won't work. They can't get rid of the black market when they overregulate it. So I got to get your take on this now. The Ontario government, the LCBO, which monopolizes the sale of liquor and other alcohol in Ontario, they've now partnered with, with Shopify, mm -hmm. which is an entirely private sector operation for them to do a lot of sales of marijuana. As someone who was involved in the, in the sale business of this, how do you feel about this kind of sole sourced or, or at least a, you know, single contract deal here? It's, it's exciting because it legitimizes cannabis. So as we see everybody in every industry jumping on board the pot, gravy train, whatever they see, that's positive. But I have to note that Cannabis Culture Headquarters, our head shop that sells magazines and clothing and you know the paraphernalia, we lost our Shopify abilities because it's related to cannabis. They said, you're selling pot-related goods. You can't, it's not even pot, it's pot-related. So we see this with banks and with businesses that they don't know who they're supposed to work with or not. But it's the responsibility of the Liberal government to have cleared this haze, to have said from the outset that cannabis is not what we've been thinking all along. We need to legalize the industry that exists. We need to welcome on board everybody who's already participating. But instead, they're going with a restrict and limit access. They're talking about it being a threat to public safety and public health, even though it improves health, and that's why it's medicine. But that's why you see Health Canada and doctors groups now saying, don't prescribe medical marijuana. Hmm. Because if they admit that it's good for you, how can it be bad enough to justify equating the laws to child pornography and terrorism? So cannabis is in a very strange place right now, and there's a lot of volatility and a lot of speculation and valuations of companies that aren't even producing the product the consumers are using. Hmm. So they need to legalize the existing suppliers who are supplying the demand. That's how you do it. All right, Jody Emery, great to see you in studio. Thank you for having me. All right, thanks for tuning in to Culture Warriors, let us know what you think about this issue. Write to us on Facebook, on social media, on Twitter. I'm Anthony Fury. Take care.